Hi, this is Nathan Wynn from AA Nomadic LLC. This video will focus on the text box control. I believe understanding the controls will give you a better foundation in learning Power Apps. This is part of the Power Apps for Beginner series. Let's get started. My text box single line underscore text has a label, and I want my text box to align with this label at all times, even when I move this label up and down. So for that purpose, I will get the label names in these three controls. I go to the Y property and I will inherit the Y position of this label. This way, if I move up, the label will go up with me. For the spacing, I go to the X, the control, the label control, X plus the label control. And I want to put a spacing of 15 and I did so across. You can see here on this label control that we'll explain later on the X property. I take the single line text x position plus the width and then add 15. And this is one of the way that you can maintain alignment and, and spacing. The text control looks a bit bland and I want to assist the user on what to type here even though we already have the label text. So in the hint text, I can type in, type something here. The hint text can also be found in this drop down. You can update in either side. And when you play, type something here will appear, but if as soon as you click on the control, it goes away. Another thing I would like to do right away is to highlight this text when it doesn't have any value. In the field property, by default, it has a white background. I will put in an if condition. If cell text cell is cell referencing, so this very specific control dot text is blank. So is blank is a condition. My right now is far because it has the word something here. If it blank, go ahead and has the background filled with this highlight color. Otherwise, have a white background when it has some values. So when you test it out, if you clear out something here, it's highlighted, type something here, and it has a white background. To extract the input values from the text box in this label control, all I have to do is reference the text box name and then dot text. So now if I tap something here, it reflected here. Often on form load or when you pull up a record, you would like to assign these text box controls default values. You cannot write to the control itself directly. You have to assign the value to a variable and then have the text box reference that variable in the default property. In this button, I set the variable var single line to this value of text. And now in the default property, I just need to reference the variable. If I click on this button, it has the value that we assigned and it become a default values. If we update here, we can see the inputs, but it's not updating the variables that we initialized with the load text button. For that, we need to add an on change action. So on change, set the var single line variable to self.text. So update the variable to whatever the input currently. For us to see the change in the variables, in this label control, we need to reference the variable single line. So now if we test this out, remove the here, and at the there, the variable will reflect off the new text. At this point, we can get the text and update the record if that's the action you would like to take. For date format, I insert another text control and name it date underscore text. In the hint text, I enter the format that I like the user to use. And if we are to set a default value to today's date, in this button, I set the var date to today. And then in the default, I should need to reference that variable. Right now, the format is sort date, and I want it to be in the format I'm asking the user to use. For that, I will use this formula here. First, I get the date value from the variable, and then I convert it to text with this format. So it has the leading zero, and as you see here, it's reflected. The difficult part is analyze the user input and make sure it is a date format. If we simply set the var date to self.text, we get an incompatible type error, because when we initialize the variable we assign is today's date and by doing so we declare this is the date type not text if we were to do a text we would convert today's date to text as so below i want to keep it as date and so i have to change the assignment 
set var date to date value of whatever the text input and by doing so you make the application happy so let's test out 1 1 20 22 it will add the leading zero it will type strippers it remained there because it doesn't know what to do it's not a date and we didn't give it instruction to do anything else we've replaced the on change formula with this condition here if the cell text is not blank is blank and we put the exclamation mark in the front then make it not blank and the cell text match this pattern here we would then set the var date to the date value of whatever is in the text box otherwise reset the text control and then notify the user and ask them to enter a valid date let's try that it's happy if we enter chippers it say please enter a valid date and it reset itself back to the last good date i will put this formula here in the description so you have them for dollars and numbers i added three new text boxes dollars number one with round numbers and number two with decimal i went ahead and add the hint text for each of them as you see here so the best way to prevent letters from being entered in these numbers text boxes is you flip the format to numbers let's do so for all of them and if when you try it would accept alpha and it would take decimal number okay we will start out with some default values for dollars and number one, one four nine nine. For num two, one four nine nine seven five. They are in double quotes, so it will be treated as text, and we will convert to numbers later. Now, it just holds as we assign it. It doesn't separate the thousand or the dollar format. We will fix that. Click here. Instead, we just we get the numeric values of the variables, and then convert it back to text with this format here. And as you see, it changes right here. We do the same for numbers. We take out the variables, convert to text, because we don't have no decimal, which you need the pound, comma, pound. For the one with decimal, things are a little bit different here because we need to add the dot zero zero to give it a decimal. So what happened if we are to clear it showed the hint text? But what if we set a zero? You see that the dollar is okay, but the decimal had the dot zero zero and the round numbers appear to be empty and not with even uh, a zero values so we need to fix that if you highlight the value for num1 it has a value of zero but it's not blank we need to replace with this condition here if the value of var num1 is equal to zero then display zero otherwise format the number as we had it before and you can see we have the thousand separators for var num2 we also have to add this condition in if the value of two equal zero then display zero otherwise display as before so if we set everything to zero you see this is a zero and this is a zero but if we want to stay true with the decimal, we can go in here and add zero, 00, and that will have it here. To update the variables with the new input when the user goes through and update these text boxes, in the onChange property, we simply set the variable to self.text across all three controls. So now, if we clear, we enter some number. everything is format as expected that's all i have for this video so i hope you enjoy it it took longer than i anticipated but it's a lot of information to cover please kindly hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already those actions cost you nothing but it helps me a lot in terms of motivating me continue to make videos for you if you feel generous you can buy me coffee links right below all right take care see you on the next video Bye bye